Whitehall, 1212. This is Scotland Yard. For the first time in history, Scotland Yard opens its official files to bring you the true stories of some of its most baffling cases. These are the true stories. The plain, unvarnished facts, just as they occurred, reenacted for you by an all-British cast. Only the names of the participants have, for obvious reasons, been changed. The broadcasts are presented with the full cooperation of Scotland Yard. Research on Whitehall 1212 is furnished by Percy Hoskins of the London Daily Express. The stories for radio are written and directed by Willis Cooper. Chief Superintendent John Davidson acts as custodian of the Black Museum. He will tell you now about Scotland Yard case number 630612, which began on the 20th June, 1946, and was concluded the 26th October the same year. Here is Chief Superintendent Davidson. Good afternoon. Aside from our collection of weapons of murder, of which we have a great many, there are many more objects here which seem highly incongruous among the knives and the guns, the battered bullets, and the conventional blunt instruments. Now, I could show you a hat, uh, a left boot, a folded five-pound note, and a writing crop. A copy of the Book of Common Prayer, all of which have figured in their various times in one murder or another. What I have to show you from the file of case number 630612 is this very small thing. <clears throat> I assure you there are other things in that box, but this, this artificial pearl from a girl's necklace aided enormously in hanging a man. You know, if you're contemplating murder, a look at our exhibits here at the Black Museum would almost make you lose your enthusiasm for it. Now, this is Superintendent Thomas Meredith, who had a great deal to do with this case. I find myself becoming more and more impatient with murderers, John. I suppose I should ask why. They're so stupid. None of them ever learns that he can't get away with it. Well, if we could get murderers to come to a school, perhaps... Well, they come to school, John, but they're always late. I don't think that they like the schoolmaster very well. Oh, the judge? No, old boy. The hangman. I was unable to accompany Inspector Cecil Daly of the CID when he went down to the Pembridge Court Hotel, Notting Hill, that Friday morning in June 1946, to investigate the reported death of a guest. When I finally arrived there two and a half hours later... I was glad I hadn't got there before. Inspector Daly told me all about it, though. She was lying there on the other bed, with one arm cramped under her body, on her face. Shot of what? Died of suffocation, the doctor says. Her face was buried in the pillow. Matter of fact, a good bit of the pillow had been stuffed into her mouth like a gag. Mm, you'd think she'd have got herself up. Well, she was tied to the bed. Oh? Uh-huh. Ankles tied together with a bath towel, head fastened to the frame of the bed with the belt of her coat. Face down on the pillow. Mm, blood stains here on the bed. You see them? She'd been beaten. What with? Well, from the marks on her back, I imagine it was a riding crop of some sort. Riding crop? Haven't seen one for years. And they took her over to the Hammersmith mortuary. You can go and have a look at the marks if you like. What about her clothes? Well, she had all her clothes on, except her shoes. Back of her dress was ripped, stuck to her back. Blood. The beating didn't kill her. So the doctor said. I fancy he'll be doing a post-mortem, though, just to be sure. Know who she was? Identity card and ration book in her purse. Name of Marjorie Tate. It's murder, of course. Well, I don't think it was measles, sir. You haven't any idea who did it? I think a bloke named Neville George Clavelli King. Oh? That's the name this room was booked under. Hmm. He's had this room booked since yesterday morning. Had a front door key. The way they run these places. That's a spot careless, isn't it? All the staff goes to bed at midnight, leaving the place locked up. So nobody saw them come in, then? Not a bloody soul. You no. don't even know he was here, then? Somebody was. Yeah. Well, looks as if we'll have to find him. Well, the manageress gave me his home address. I expect it's phony, though. Mm, let's have a try. Where is it? It's 
Seven Oaks in Kent. Well, we'll get the Seven Oaks police on the telephone and... Well, uh, I think I'll run over there if you don't mind. If you like, but a telephone uh, call... Ah, I'd rather go in person. I'd like to bring him in myself. But why, when the telephone... You didn't see that poor girl's body. Inspector Daly was a little surprised to find that the address was correct. Nobody, however, was much surprised to find Neville George Clavelli King gone from there. Daly brought back a photograph of the man, which showed him as a remarkably good-looking young man of about 30, dressed in the uniform of a flight sergeant of the Royal Air Force. We contacted them. Well, if you do hear of him, squadron leader, will you please let us hear from you at once, then? Uh-huh. Inspector Daly. That's right. Scotland Yard. Thank you, sir. What about him? Snafu is the American, say, sir. What? Posted as a deserter three months ago. Hmm. I knew it looked too easy. As a matter of fact, it didn't look quite so difficult as Inspector Meredith seemed to think. The pressman had got hold of the story, and every newspaper in London, as well as a great many in the rest of the country were carrying lurid stories about the sadistic murderer and his victim, for one thing. Another thing, the photograph of the young Air Force sergeant had been given general circulation amongst all the police stations in England. And with the RAF looking for him as a deserter, it seemed certain to me that he'd be found at once. But he wasn't. He did communicate with Scotland Yard, with me, rather... That was on Monday the 24th, three days after the battered body of Marjorie Tate had been discovered. Well, true, my name was in all the papers, but he didn't have to demote me to the rank of inspector. Dear Inspector Meredith, he wrote, I feel it to be my duty to inform you of certain facts in connection with the death of Mrs. Marjorie Tate at Notting Hill Gate. Kind of him. Quite. I looked in at the hotel last Sunday, but not with Mrs. Tate, whom I met for the first time last week. She had asked me if she could use my hotel room on Sunday night, and I gave her my keys, asking her to leave the door open when she left. She, she said she would be leaving the room about 2 a.m. It must have been about 3 a.m. when I returned to the hotel and found her in the condition of which you are aware Way to put it. She had told me that she was to meet a man there whom I have seen. I will give you a description of him. Aged about 30, dark hair, black, with small moustache, height about 5 feet 9 inches, slim build. His name is Jack. And uh, I gather he was a friend of Mrs. Tate's of long standing. Does he say why you left the place? I realized I was in an invidious position when I found the body and... Rather than notify the police, I packed my belongings and left N.G.C. King. The man think we're idiots. Oh, here's a postscript. I'm in possession of the instrument with which Mrs. Tate was beaten and am forwarding it to you today. You will probably find my fingerprints on it, but you should also find others as well. N.G.C.K. What are you daydreaming about, Daly? I'm just wondering why he killed her, sir. You think he did? Sir, I'm not an idiot. I sometimes wonder whether I am. I watched the post eagerly all day for the instrument King had spoken of. Of course, it didn't arrive. Not on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. On Thursday, Marjorie Tate was buried. The coroner's jury had not found out anything except what we had already known. Another victim of a person or persons unknown. That same day, I had a full report of what a squad of detectives and laboratory men had discovered in the hotel room at Notting Hill Gate. They discovered nothing. No fingerprints, nothing. Oh, yes, yes, Blood. On Friday, I had a visitor at Scotland Yard. Who is it, I asked Inspector Daly. A woman. A young woman. This one's alive. Uh, ask her to come in. In here, please, miss. How do you do? Yvonne Higgins, Inspector Meredith. Superintendent Meredith, Miss Higgins. Oh, I'm sorry. Never called you Inspector. I'm That's quite sorry. all right, miss. Uh, who 
call me, Inspector? Why, my fiancé, Inspector. Oh, superintendent. You know him. You've spoken to him. Well, I mean... Who is this man? Why, he says he knows you, sir. He came in here to see you. Isn't he here? Who is he? What have you done with him? Is he in jail? Why, what's the... No, he isn't in jail yet, Miss Higgins. Now, tell the inspector... <coughs> Sorry, the superintendent, his name, please. Although I think he knows. I'd like to hear this young lady tell me. Why, it's Neville George Clemelli King. 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 Oh, then you do know him, don't you? We have heard of him, Miss uh, Higgins, is it? Higgins, yes. But I expect to become Mrs. King one day soon. Neville was visiting me and my parents, you know, just Monday. He told us about the frightful murder that happened in his hotel room whilst he was away. He said you called on him and showed him the body. Very gruesome, he said it was. He had to leave to come to London because you wanted his advice. His advice? Why, isn't that right? Neville said... Isn't he here helping you? Uh, my dear young woman, I, uh, I mean, I... What I think Superintendent Meredith is asking you, Miss Higgins, is... Uh, are you telling us the truth? Of course I'm telling you the truth, officer. I demand to see my fiancé at once. He told me he didn't trust you and didn't want to come. I'm sure of that. Well, where is he? I don't know. You're lying to me. You've got him hidden away somewhere. Oh, oh make us stop that, Bailey. <laughs> uh, well, I... Uh... <laughs> uh, now, look here. Uh, I can't do anything with this. <laughs> You're holding him prisoner. No. Well, that's the thing that he gets. All right, now, now, young woman. Stop her, Daly. Listen. I can't stop her. Neville! Neville, where have they got you? You see? I want Neville. Now, wait a second. Now, wait a second. Wait, I say. That's better. Now, listen to me. Oh, look here. I'm old enough to be your father. Will you believe me? Yes, Well, then, now, listen. We want your Neville just as badly as you do. But you aren't going to marry him. No. No, I think I can assure you that we're not. What we want is to ask him a few questions about the murder of Mrs. Tate. He had nothing to do with it. You asked his advice. Madam, I have never seen the man in my life. He said you knew him well. I do not. Neither do I. But he said you asked his advice. He lied if he said that. Oh, I don't understand. (laughs) How long have you known this man? Well, a month. Are you aware that he is a deserter from the RAF? He's a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. There aren't any lieutenant colonels in the Air Force, Miss. Oh, (laughs) I was going to marry him. Do you still want to? Did... Did he... He didn't murder that woman, did he? Did he, Miss... Uh, We think he knows who did, miss. That's why we want to find him. What am I going to do? How old are you? I'm 25, sir. Then you are certainly old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. I suggest you go back home and make up your own mind. Now, look Young woman, I would point out to you that you are dealing with the police now. Yes. And if you hear anything further from him, you are to advise us at once. Yes, sir. And after we are finished with him... And the RAF. Yes, After we're all finished with him. I don't think I shall want to marry him. You will probably find that course much safer. Goodbye, Miss Higgins. This way, Miss. I hope you do find him. Why, there's a speed... Tut, tut, Miss Higgins. Yes. Well, I fancy I handled that quite well, Daly. Ah, but you didn't find him, Superintendent. No, she'll turn him up for us. If he doesn't beat another woman to death first. Doreen Reed's body was found three days later near Bournemouth in a deep, narrow ravine called Branksome Chine, quite near the center of the town. Chief Constable of Soup of Southampton, who had the authority, called Scotland Yard at once, and it was quite natural that Daly and I were sent down to Bournemouth. Quite a group was assembled at the Bournemouth police station when we arrived. 
Detective Constable Ted Allardyce of Bournemouth. We've got the body in the mortuary if you'd like to see it, Superintendent. Uh, you go and look at it, Daly. Yes, sir. I'll take you over there presently, Inspector Daly, if you wish. Uh, thank you. Who are these other people? The fat gentleman there is the manager of the Norfolk Hotel, where this Miss Reed was staying, sir. The dead end. Hmm. The other one's a hotel manager, too. The Tollard Royal Hotel, where Miss Reed was last seen alive. The other man's the whole porter of the Tollard Hotel. I don't know what he's doing here. Shall I throw him out? Oh, that's where she was last seen. Let him stay there. Um, I say, Daly, yes, you go over to the mortuary with Constable... Uh, Constable... Allardyce, Yes, sir. I'll have a talk with these fellows. Yes, sir. Did one of them find her? No, sir. This is an elderly lady found the body. She's at home. Shock was too much for her. Well, you pop along to the mortuary, Inspector, and come back as soon as you can. Yes, sir. I'll talk to the uh, fat one, the one where she lived. Right, sir. Come over here, please, Mr. Golden. Come along, Inspector, if you please. It isn't far, sir. We'll be back directly. All right. Uh, here, uh, this gentleman? I'm Superintendent Meredith of Scotland Yard, sir. Eli Golden, sir. Managing director of the Norfolk Hotel here. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? I, I understand Miss uh, Reed lived at your hotel, sir. That is correct. A most charming young woman. She's been ill, influenza, I believe. Bournemouth is an excellent place to recuperate, as you know, uh, Superintendent. Yes, sir. I was very fond of the young lady. When did you last see her, Mr. Golden? On Friday afternoon, the 5th. She was starting out for a walk. I remember I said to her, Don't get lost, Mr. Reed. Uh, did Miss Reed have any visitors during her stay at your hotel, sir? No, sir. Not that I know of. Oh, yes. Her father did call her on last, last Sunday, the 30th of June, but he returned at once to his station. He's a major in the Guards' Armoured Brigade, I believe. Did he know about his daughter's death? The body was found only last night, sir. No ideas about it, I suppose? Me? I have my own ideas, yes, sir. Mind telling me about them? I think she was murdered. And who murdered her? I would not care to impugn the rectitude of a guest at a competing hostel, sir. You what? Be suspicious of the customer of another hotel. What are you talking about? The person with whom Miss Reed was last seen is a guest of my colleague, Mr. Athelstan Levitt, there, of the Tollard Royal Hotel. Levitt. Uh, come here, Mr. Levitt, please. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Inspector... Uh, Superintendent. Excuse me. Uh, Superintendent Meredith of Scotland Yard, Athelstan. I was just telling him that the late Miss Reed was last seen alive with one of your guests. Thank you, Eli. I'm afraid that is true, Superintendent, unfortunately. Who is the guest? Uh, group Captain Rupert Brook of the Royal Rupert Air Rupert Brook? I'm under the impression that he's a relation of the late lamented poet, sir. Is he still staying at your place? He's still a guest at the Tollard Royal, dear sir. I'd like to see him. Surely you don't suspect Group Captain Brook, sir. He is a guest... I'd like to see him. I shall ask him to come down here, sir. Mm, please. By the way, did you see Miss Reed the day she disappeared? I saw her with Group Captain Brook in the lounge that afternoon and evening, sir, yes. You saw Brook start to accompany Miss Reed to her home, the Norfolk Hotel, sir, where she never arrived. I did not. You said you did, Ethelstan. I said I saw him start away with her, but he came back and she walked home alone. Or started to. Did they quarrel? I don't think so. Tell the superintendent the best of your story, Athelstan. Will you please stop prompting me, Eli? If you please, gentlemen. Go on, Athelstan, go on. Eli. All right, superintendent. Uh, group Captain Brooke had a drink in the lounge. I think he drank a pink gin. A gin and it, you said, Athelstan. What? Does it matter what he drank? A gin and... and gentlemen, it. please. Whatever he drank, he presently went out through the front door alone, looked around a few seconds... Athelstan always watches his guests so closely. I learned the art from watching you, my dear Eli. Uh, where was I? Your guest was looking around. Uh, oh, yes, yes. He, he went for a stroll in the dark. Be quiet. Did he follow Miss Reed? No. Well, at least I don't remember. Well, what happened? He didn't come back, Superintendent. Well, who didn't? You? No, I came back, but, uh, well, it was rather unusual. Group Captain Brook came back to his room through a window. Why? He told Mr. Levitt here that he was playing a joke on the hall porter. Peter Lynn over there. What sort of a joke? 
He told me he knew Peter'd be on duty all night, and he'd think he hadn't come in. Who? Uh, Group Captain Brooks, sir. So he took a ladder the builders had been using and stuck it up against his window and popped in the hotel that way, and when he hadn't been seen coming in, he'd been there in the morning, and uh, Peter wouldn't know it. Very funny, Superintendent. Yes. I want to see this group, Captain, at once, Mr. Levin. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, Superintendent Meredith. Huh? Oh, uh, hello, Daly. I've seen her. Yeah? I'd like to speak to the superintendent privately, if you please, uh, gentlemen. Oh, oh why, oh, certainly. Uh, uh, get that fellow down here, Levitt. Oh, here's Constable Allardyce. Allardyce, go to this gentleman's hotel with him and bring that... Group Captain uh, Lord Tennyson, or whatever his name is. Uh, group uh, Captain Bring him back here Brooks, at once. I want to sir. see him. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, now, Mr. Levitt, sir. What's up, uh, Daly? I saw a little talker. And in my present opinion, it's the same man. Same fellow that killed the other one, you mean? Uh, she's been beaten, too. The marks look like the ones on the woman that nothing he'll get. Like a riding crop, you said then. Uh, I take my oath that this was a riding crop, too. She's suffocated, too. One of her stockings had been rammed down her throat. Oh, her face was quite blue. Mm -hmm. Does look like the same bloke. Yeah, there's only one thing was different. What? He cut this one's throat, too, after he'd beaten her. Something else different, too. Sir? It was an Air Force sergeant that was mixed up in the other affair. Looks as if he got promoted. There's a group captain mixed up in this one. Group captains in the next room, sir. Uh, who, Allardyce? Well, that fellow from the Tollard Royal, sir. Have you been there and back? Well, sir, that's Mr. Levitt. He didn't want me to go into the hotel. As everyone knows, I'm a police officer. So he fetched him down himself while I waited here. Did I or did I not give you a direct order, Constable Allardyce? You did, sir. Which you didn't obey. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll deal with you later, my lad. Come along, Daly. Yes, sir. Oh, and you, Constable, you stay outside this door here and wait until I call you. Do you understand that? See that you do. In here? Yes, sir. I brought Group Captain Brook down here, sir, as you You may step outside, Mr. Levitt. You too, Mr. Golden. Outside, both of you. And uh, please wait. Come on, now. Well, Group Captain Brook, you're not in uniform. My dear man, I'm I'm on leave. If you knew anything about... I'll have a look at your papers, please. Oh, it's quite all right. I'm Superintendent Meredith, CID Scotland Yard. So I understand. Your papers, please. Oh, well, look, old chap, they're in my jacket back at the hotel. Good Mr. Levitt rushed me down here in such a hurry. Levitt! I... Yes, sir? Get this man's jacket from his room down here at once. Yes, sir. I say... Aren't you just a trifle high-handed, old man? I merely want to be sure you are who you say you are. Well, I'm sure my papers will prove who I am. I hope so. Now, you knew Miss Doreen Reed. The young woman who was murdered Friday night. How do you know? What do you say, Daly? I said I wondered how you knew she was murdered Friday night, group captain. Why, I thought everyone knew that, old boy. It seems you were the last person to see her alive. Afraid so. Awfully sorry. She's rather a nice girl. Shocking thing, isn't it? Will you tell me why you entered your rooms that night by means of a ladder instead of in the normal manner, Group Captain? Oh, that. (laughs) Did old Levitt tell you about that? I told him, you know. A great joke on Peter, the hall porter. We're always ragging each other. He was a leading aircraftsman in the early days of the war. Dropped a hundred-pound bomb on his foot. Oh, it was a dummy one. <laughs> Loaded with earth, you know. Was that the only reason why you crawled into your rooms by the window, sir? Huh? Oh, why, of course, old boy. What other reason would there be? That's what I'm wondering, sir. Well, I assure you, it's just... See who it is, Daly. Yes. Group Captain Brooks jacket, sir, from the hotel. Thank you, Allardyce. Excuse me, sir. What? Is that group Captain Brooke? Yes. No, it ain't, sir. What? Do you know him? What's going on there? 
That ain't Scoop Captain Brooks, sir. No, no, what sort of nonsense? Now, look here, say? Allardyce. I've heard about enough of this nonsense. I said he ain't Scoop Captain nothing, sir. Constable. Who is he, Constable? Here's who he is, sir. Uh, yeah. Right here in my pocket. Here's his picture. Right here on this bulletin you sent out yourself from Scotland Yard not a week ago. Look here. For murder. Wanted. For the murder of Marjorie Ruth Tate. Neville George Clavelli King. That's who he is, sir. Aren't you, group captain? In the pocket of the jacket, we found no papers at all. Only a cloakroom ticket from the Bournemouth West Railway Station for a suitcase. Allardyce went and fetched it, and we opened it up. Group Captain Brooke watched us with his pleasant smile. Inside the suitcase was the name of the owner, Flight Sergeant N.G.C. King, R.A.F. <laughs> Inside it, too, were several other things. One, an old-fashioned riding crop stained with blood. Two... A blue foulard scarf, also slightly stained with blood. Three, a single artificial pearl broken apparently from a necklace. Miss Reed had been wearing an artificial pearl necklace when last seen. Forty-seven pearls were found alongside the body. There are forty-eight in a necklace of this type. The blood on the scarf was his. There was a small scratch in his neck. Blood of the same type and bits of skin corresponding to his was found under the dead girl's fingernails. Blood type OA, Marjorie Tate's type, and blood type B, Doreen Reed's type, were found on the riding crop. A blood stain on the clothing of Doreen Reed corresponded exactly with the pattern of the plaiting of the riding crop shaft. And Flight Sergeant Neville George Clavelli King, who had tried being a group captain, made a statement. I do not hate women at all, in general. But I'm afraid that I have a very short temper where women are concerned. Marjorie Tate was a bad woman. She needed to be punished, and I punished her. It's quite easy. So when Doreen Reed refused my company, I decided to punish her. But when one gets the habit, it's so easy to go a little too far, isn't it? I must say that Yvonne Higgins, whom I intended to marry, was always quite nice to me. It was as well for Miss Higgins. A jury found Neville King guilty of murder at Old Bailey, and he was added to the casualty list of the Royal Air Force at Wandsworth on the 26th of October, 1946. Death by process of law is the last entry in his record. in today's reenactment of Scotland Yard case number 630612 were Harvey Hayes, Guy Spall, Morris Dallimore, Gordon Stern, Evan Thomas, Lester Fletcher, Beulah Garrick, and Pat O'Malley. Whitehall 1212 is written and directed by Willis Cooper. <laughs> In these uncertain times, it's pretty hard to plan for the future. But more and more American girls are discovering a career that offers both opportunity and security. And that career is in modern nursing. There are new and greater opportunities in this job now than ever before. And the demand for nurses is continually increasing. To become a student nurse, you must be a high school graduate or a college student of good health and character. You can qualify... Get full information at the nearest hospital in your community. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.